Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is the 23rd of January, 2021, and this is the Flight Sim News. So first up is a video memory poll, and this poll was created by uh, Raz Spector who goes on to say, Hi all, I'm the lead dev on the Falklands map and wanted to just understand what video memory people have on their cards. This will give me a better understanding on what I can include texture-wise and how far I can push the envelope. Also taking into consideration of the Ed Minimum spec, of course. And it goes on to show what I kind of, you know, thought all along is 8 gigabytes seems to be that sweet spot. Uh, there's a small percentage, about 12% of those who took part in the poll are in the 6 gigabyte range, but the majority are in 8 gigabyte or higher. Uh, pretty cool stuff from the guys over at RASBAM. It's nice that they're taking the time to actually look into that kind of stuff uh, before producing their next map. And uh, hopefully that makes it a, a much smoother product in the end. Next up, a little more from RASBAM. Uh, RASBAM is uh, endorsing Verbal Controls. It says this is a free endorsement to Verbal Controls. Their products are awesome and I highly recommend them. Hats off to them. I bet you they got them for free though because that's a whole hell of a lot of money in Verbal Controls sitting there. So... I don't know. I think I'd like them if I got a whole bunch of verbal controls for free, too. <laughs> All right, next up is IL2 Stormovic News. Uh, this is the Devlog 269, I believe. It says, Dear friends, so here is the new year 2021. Like anyone else, we're going to hope that it will be better than the previous one. However, for IL-2 Great Battles, the last year was quite positive in spite of all the complications. And they're pretty right about that because I think, you know, out of all the sims we had last year, IL-2, Flying Circus, everything that falls under that Great Battles envelope uh, was pretty stellar. There wasn't really anything bad to come of anything that they put out last year, which is pretty awesome. And then they go on to talk about Let's start with the first in-game shots of the British fighter Hawker Typhoon, which is being developed for the Battle of Normandy. As you can see, it looks nearly complete, but in fact, there's still a lot to do. A hefty chunk of work is left on its cockpit instruments and the flight model. Nevertheless, we're expecting to finish everything before the end of this spring and release it to all Battle of Normandy customers. Speaking of the Normandy map, the layout of towns and its continental part is complete for the first iteration. A bunch of landmark buildings and significant part of the AI-controlled ground vehicles planned for Normandy are already done. Uh, we're researching the data for the Normandy career mode. Meanwhile, the AAA trucks are also showing good progress. The GAZMM with 72K gun will be ready first. Its chassis is ready both in terms of 3D and physical models while the crew animations and audio are being worked on. We've managed to find the authentic firing tables prepared by the main artillery directorate of the Red Army and printed by the military publishing house of the People's Commissariat of defense of the Soviet Union in 1943 and made the ballistics of the 25 millimeter rounds and their armor penetration ability in various cases as close to the real thing as possible according to this data. We still have to research and recreate uh, the really complicated correction system for the gun sights. That's what we're working on now while our partners at Digital Forms are creating the complex 3D model of the AAA gun itself as you can see on the screens below. See you in the skies and on the battlefield, the Stormovic team. And there's a nice variety of screenshots showing off not only the new Typhoon but the guns that they speak of. This looks like it's going to be a really fun plane. Mm -hmm. 
Next up in IL2 news, the Winter Sale 2.0 has begun in the official web store and on Steam. Save between 30% to 85% on most items. The Winter Sale will run from January 22nd to February 5th. Um, I think this is the first time that Tank Crew is on sale. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that really wasn't really on sale in the previous ones. And it looks like Tank Crew is 35% off. And that seems to be really picking up some steam. No pun intended. Um, I've seen a bunch of people talking about it lately. I think uh, Shamrock15 over at the Stormbirds did an article on it last week as well. Or not that long ago. Um, and it looks like the, the usual... Uh, Battle of Stalingrad, Battle of Moscow, Battle of Kuban are everywhere from 85 to 75% off. Battle of Baden Platt is 66% off, and so is Flying Circus um, 1 for 66% off. It's a great time to get your hands on the Battle of Baden Platt and Flying Circus. Those are probably two of the most impressive. Uh, titles you can come away from there. Looks like the Hurricane Collector's Plane is 35% off, and then there are varied sales on all the rest of the Collector's Planes. It looks like uh, the Yaks are 40%, and then some of the other planes are 66 and then it cycles down to some of the, you know, a little bit older planes are 75% off, and then 85% off for some of the very first collector's planes. And then you've got uh, the last new campaign was Ice Ring. It's 30% off. Uh, Blazing Step is 75% off, and so are the rest of the campaigns. Uh, Desert Wings to Brook is 35% off, and Cliffs of Dover Blitz is 75% off. And then all the Rise of Flight content is 75% off. Uh, definitely now is a good time to jump in there and see what you can get your hands on for a reasonable price. I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. Right, next up is Polychop Simulations. What is it this week with developers, you know, hawking other people's gear? <laughs> it's not a bad thing, though, because by the look of things, these Komodo simulations, uh, flight gear for the OH-58D controls, look pretty freaking impressive. And Polychop goes on to say, heads up for the people that want to go to the next level. Komodo Simulations has just started the pre-order phase of its OH-58D controls. You can find it here. And then heading on over to their page, looks like you can get a pretty kick-ass cyclic, a collective, and I don't... Oh, they do have pedals. Yes, I wasn't sure if they had pedals. And they have pedals. I just wonder what these things cost. These look pretty impressive, so I'm guessing the price of admission... Oh, wait a minute. Pre-order starts Friday the 22nd of January. They said February on the other thing. Uh, there's a 15% discount off the Kiowa grips, base units, and pedals delivery. Well, it might be a good time to jump in there and get your pre-order in. I'm just curious to how much these things cost. Yeah, that's a whole lot of money. So it looks like the grips are about 400 to 500 pounds British sterling. And then the Kiowa grips, 520. And then you got to have a base unit. Holy cow. I mean, if money was no object and I hit that powerball and instantly found myself rich I would totally jump over here and get these but I think for the most part as cool as they look they're going to be out of reach for the majority of the flight simulation community at those prices but I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual and you can check it out for yourself next up heat blur has teased us a little bit again they go on to say, the next F-14 patch is mostly a maintenance release in prep for the large feature releases in March. However, one useful new TID feature will be the ability to assign heading and distance to waypoints. 
I'll throw a link to this in the video description as usual, and you can check it out for yourself. Next up, Greg over at Reflected Simulations put out a post. Uh, with the upcoming Zone 5 campaign, you're getting 16 missions in total. Let's have a look at the details. The campaign itself consists of 13 missions. 11 of these are part of the training syllabus, and the two extras are you will see. Uh, you can see on the below card how the training will progress in terms of complexity and challenges. No two flights will be the same, I guarantee that. On top of this, you will get three quick start training missions that start in the air right before the fight's on call. They're also fully voiced and documented, and they're great for practicing. You'll find these under Mods Campaigns folder. A question that often pops up about my campaigns, what are the success criteria of the missions? How do I progress? The mission counts as successfully completed, and you can progress to the next one if you land at Nellis and come to a full stop anywhere, you get killed during the engagement, yes, it's also a valid income, maybe an even better learning experience than winning. If you got killed during an engagement in real life, you didn't have to refly the mission until you succeeded. During the debrief, you analyzed what happened and made sure you'd take away some learning point to ensure you wouldn't make the same mistakes again. TACView is a great tool for this as seen in Red Kite's video. Or C, you select Skip Mission option under the F10 radio menu. I added this safeguard just in case. Stay tuned for a special interview with Bio and I. That sounds pretty cool, and here is the list of the first 11 missions that they're talking about. I'll throw a link to this in the video description, and you can check it out for yourself. All right, last up is a bit of news from Eagle Dynamics themselves. As well as the substantial push to complete the Hornet's new features, we would like to mention a notable addition. Handy Wind Bulk Carrier. What the hell is that? <laughs> it's a new civilian ship equipped with a functioning helipad for the Huey, the Gazelle, or the Black Shark 2. And then for the F5 Tiger, F5E Tiger 2, the headwind and tailwind anomalies have now been fixed. Uh, for the mission editor, AI escort craft not engaging targets correctly issues have been resolved. And then DCS World in general, we have added more realistic cockpit sounds when using weapons. Uh, the F-10 ruler in VR and multi-monitor mode has now been fixed. The SA-2 guidance has received a necessary accuracy improvement. Also, user-created ground units now show in white in the F-10 view. You can expect these minor fixes and many more additions to be included in the next open beta. 2.5.6 update planned for next week. We are incredibly optimistic about where we're heading, and we believe that the opportunities for developers and the creative community are endless, as are all positive and meaningful benefits to our customers. What was that all about? <laughs> Anyways, it, it does sound promising. I'll give them that. And it uh, looks like the next patch is slated for next week, as I reported in one of the last Flight Sim News. Uh, as always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button. And until next time, guys.